welcome to our session about Packet. And as Luzka said, like it's been two years since we are working on this project and it's been quite a journey and we'd like to share it with you right now. So in here, it's three of us, uh, myself, Tomáš, Franta and Honor. And uh, I will start in the beginning and then guys will follow up with some more interesting in-depth uh, topics. And like all of this work wouldn't be possible without the whole team. And you can see their avatars right now. And if you're interested, like these are their GitHub avatars. So you can go ahead, look at GitHub, like who are they, what they're working on, if you're interested. And I'm really grateful for all of these people to have them on our team because they are like amazing engineers. We have awesome manager and it's been a pleasure to work with this team. Uh, okay, so let's start. Let's talk about what Packet actually is because we have 46 people on right now and I'm pretty sure some of you know our project and some of you don't. Uh, and Packet is actually a CI solution for upstream projects uh, using RPMs. This means that uh, if you have, if you are an upstream maintainer and you have a project, you can easily use Packet to integrate it with downstream distributions such as Fedora Linux or CentOS Stream. Uh, it works with GitHub.com and GitLab.com as well, and you'll hear Franta to showcase it a little bit. And another thing, aside from the CI part, you can also use Packet to deliver your new upstream releases into Fedora Linux. Uh, it's been used now, it's been used by many projects, and you can, you'll can you see that later by Honor, like what, are, what other projects and how are they using it. And if words are hard to imagine, let's see some pictures. And this is how the Packet as a service GitHub app looks like. So you can go to GitHub Marketplace, look at it, set up a new plan, which means that it's for free. So you just add it to your repositories and yeah, you can start using almost right away. There's just one glitch or a thing which we need to approve you to use it because of like legal reasons. And then you are able to start building your projects uh, for, for Fedora or for Epo or for CentOS Stream. And let's have a look how it, uh, how you can experience it in your GitHub pull request. And it's look like this. So this is a screenshot of Anaconda and you can see they're using GitHub Actions to do CI aside from Packet. And you can see that uh, built in Rawhide passed, built in Fedora ENL failed uh, because the truth is port this week and I'm still waiting for it to become fixed. And you can see that their installation actually passed in Rawhide. So, their change is not disruptive. So this is how it looks. And this is how it can work for you as well. So if you're interested, you can set it up or let us know and we'll be happy to help you. So as I said in the beginning, like it was quite a journey two years ago when we started the project. And for those of you who know how it feels like to start a new project, when you start writing first lines of code and writing readme or setting up uh, the operation scripts, like in the beginning, it was like, uh, I called it punk development. Basically, it was just a proof of concept to try if this would work. And we saw that it can work. It just take, it just took a lot of time to make it work like reliably and support different use cases. So you can read the list what like things we didn't have two years ago. And let's just forget it and let's move what we actually have today, which is, I would say, more interesting. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so right now, what I'm really amazed that we have very clearly defined development workflow. Or all our Git repositories have contributing MD. And if you are a new contributor, you can go read it and be able to create a contribution to any of our repositories easily. And if that's not enough, we'll be happy to help you in pull requests or defining issues or even chat with you on IRC on Freenode. And this is this was really helpful for us because we frequently participate with Google Summer of Code or Red Hat Open Source Contest. So for those of you who would like to participate, like this is really important to define your development workflow so that new contributors, they don't have hard times trying to set up contributions or set up the development environment. 
Uh, the next thing we do a lot is we, uh, we test a lot. We have different types of testing. We have pull request testing. We have daily tests which are running against the production service. And this helped us improve the stability a lot. Or, and if we if we ever regress, which happens some, uh, from time to time that we have a new deployment and suddenly some things break, we can revert or we can spot it like within minutes or even like hours. Uh, because back then, like our main problem was that we had outages, but we didn't even know about them. Like we literally had to have users tell us that, hey, this doesn't work for two days. And we were like, oh, really? We didn't know. And so alerting and these daily tests really helped us to improve this. So those things which are in red, uh, they'll be speak, spoke about later uh, for staging environment, which you'll be able to use. And Franta will uh, describe it. Uh, better and also Hunor has some very nice slides about monitoring. Uh, so okay, what I didn't and last thing I wanted to mention for this slide was that if you have a project which is a service as a service, which packet it is, uh, you suddenly have a need for different roles in your team. I mean, if your project is just a library or a binary or something like that. It, it, it's not being deployed, it's just code, which is being released and then put into downstream distributions. But if your project is a service, you suddenly need to watch the service and make sure that someone looks at alerts and uh, tries to address them. And you need to deploy things into production and write uh, change log or, or all of these things. So what we did in the past year, we defined rotating roles within our team and we keep rotating them every sprint between the team, team members. And with these roles, we know like who is responsible for what for a particular sprint. And this really helped us to spread the load across the whole team. And at the same time, like every team member gets to try different things and we even swap often, or someone likes to watch the alerts uh, more than just release new things. So this, is, this was also very helpful. And the other roles we defined was that we split the team lead role into like product owner, team lead, and we actually have two product owners in our team right now. And that, that's also very helpful to have multiple roles or multiple tasks spread across these roles so that one person or two people are not overloaded with responsibilities. And actually the younger engineers can grow in their roles and like become senior, which I think is super helpful and I completely recommend this to other teams as well. Uh, so that will be how our things today and you'll hear about it more from guys later. And it, right now I would like to talk about a bit about SourceGit and that's our initiative to change how uh, packages are being maintained downstream. So we want to introduce a modern development workflow for CentOS stream for eight and nine, which is coming out soon. And it's going to work differently for both because we are in different stages of development of those two distributions. I mean, CentOS stream eight and nine. And in coming weeks, you should be able to see these source Git repositories be available for CentOS stream eight in GitLab and for nine, it will be later. And we would also love to bring this to federal Linux as well. But we had a big challenge with the infrastructure move that the infrastructure move took a lot of resources from the team. And we couldn't find a place where would we host these repositories in Fedora Infra. So if you have an idea where that place would be, please come to us, talk to us. We'd love to like discuss that possibility. But that's how we are for now. And for those of you who don't know what SourceGit is, well, let's have a look. Uh, it's a it's, uh, so if you're familiar with how uh, things are being maintained in Fedora or L or, or CentOS stream, uh, we have these repositories called Diskit, and they have spec files and additional sources in them. And then they contain uh, hashes of upstream tarballs for the corresponding releases. And this is problematic if you need to change the code because you need to change the code somewhere on the side and to generate a page file and they integrate it into this repository and then like create a pull request with 
file which is a patch and it's not actually changing the code so it's really tough to review and hard to work with and like all the people who do this actually invented their own ways of how to interact with it so it's like very scattered around so with SourceKit, we are trying to have the repository look like upstream repository and these downstream changes they would be just like additional commits so in this picture you see that the part which is uh, grayed out is upstream that's literally the upstream history up to the uh, 2.33 release for glibc and then on top of it we have additional commits which are again like code changes but also there is like spec file and configuration for packet and they are just additional commits and packet is able to work with this and is able to transform this type of repository to this git so that we can still build production builds in koji the same way we do but the development happens in like different way and more convenient way for developers and i have an, another example for this and uh, we actually worked with florian weim recently and he was doing like uh he wanted to bring the 2.33 upstream release to fedora 34 and he actually used source git for that and for him it, it was as easy as just cherry pick a few commits from upstream so that uh, the package would build correctly in 34 and like that was it like he didn't have to create any additional files or like set up field git repos just for the sake of being able to create the files and i was really like i was really amazed how well it worked and in the end he got successful build and now we can put it to 34 and have this glibc upstream list in there uh, that would be all from me and for SourceGit, and I would like to hand it over to Franta to discuss what's new. Okay, so let's take a look what happened in Packet in the last year. We have implemented a lot of new things and uh, also fixed some bugs and introduced new bugs and fixed some of those. So let's see uh, some new stuff. So our main uh, feature is creating copper copper builds and we added a possibility to uh, edit the settings of those copper projects so now you can use custom projects custom owners so we can build in in your own projects uh, also you can set the visibility on the copper project page uh, add the some repositories that will be used during the build uh, also, uh, by default, we set uh, the projects to be removed after 60 days, uh, but you can disable it now. Uh, if you use custom project and custom owner for building copper uh, via packet, uh, we can help you with updating those settings and uh, we will send you this command and you have multiple options. You can grant us the admin permission to your project and we will do the update for you. Or uh, you need to do this uh, update uh, yourself. Uh, next uh, big feature is that we, we've added uh, new triggers. So by now uh, you can uh, build also for new commits to the branches and also for new releases which with combination with the previous uh, previous options uh, now you can use packet also for creating uh, copper repositories that are stable and you can use for example copper repository uh, for main branch or stable branch or development branch and uh, provide your users quicker access to your uh, to your uh, code. Uh, next feature is uh, that we edit support for building in Koji. So uh, to match closer the behavior you have in uh, Fedora. Uh, by now you have two options. Uh, you can use scratch builds, uh, which are some testing uh, builds uh, that are not going to go anywhere or you need to set up your 
or a custom tag which we can build in and uh, so you can preserve your builds. Uh, yeah, the slides are a bit slow. Uh, yeah, uh, here is another example of the commit status uh, uh, we put to your pull requests. Uh, by now, you can use some new targets. Uh, the truth uh, you can build in. Uh, there is a Fedora ELN newly added, and also you can build in Apple, Apple 7 and 8. Uh, and also in the CentOS stream. Uh, here uh, we need to note that uh, the CentOS stream will be switched to, to CentOS stream 8 and CentOS stream 9 to make this screenshot clear. Um, another killer feature we have is running tests on those builds. And uh, that's what, that was a really tough year with this uh, because uh, we don't run the build ourselves in our infrastructure, but we use testing farm to do the tests for us. Uh, and uh, about testing farm, you can, uh, there was a workshop right before our talk. Uh, so if you want to know more, uh, watch it on demand if you missed that. Uh, so, uh, and testing farm was switching uh, the API and also the infrastructure and the whole architecture to improve it a lot. Uh, and sadly, uh, the old cluster, the old version died slowly and cannot be uh, corrected. Uh, but fresh news, uh, we have, uh, uh, there was a lot of work done in the last weeks, last days on both sides, on the packet side and also on the testing farm side. And now you can try the uh, new version of their API also on the production version. Uh, you have a better result page and also full TMT support, which is the format uh, you can use for uh, defining tests and the same uh, definition of the test can be used across the federal ecosystem and also via packet in upstream and via, via DMT tool also locally. So one test definition for multiple, uh, multiple environments. If you don't want to uh, define your tests, uh, by default, we run installability test. So if you just add the test job to your configuration file, we will uh, use testing farm to install your package uh, from the copper repository to, to verify that it can be installed. And uh, so another, uh, another nice feature. So let's move on. Uh, a lot of simplification and cleanup was done on the config uh, field. Uh, we are not now much clever and much more configurable. Uh, and uh, interesting part is, for example, that you can have some inheritance or and overrides of, uh, of some options with, that are general for all jobs, and you can specify some or override them for the uh, single jobs. Uh, you can also have multiple jobs of the same time, which is not possible a year ago. And uh, we also introduced a packet validate config command line command that you can use to uh, verify your configuration file. Uh, as Tomáš said, uh, in June, we made our staging environment widely available. Uh, it is another GitHub application. So we now have packet as a service and packet as a service uh, stage GitHub application, which you can easy, uh, easily install both together uh, with the production one or only the staging one. 
so if you want to help us or uh, let us uh, give us some feedback sooner than it's the code lands to production, then we would be glad if you can try our staging environment. But there are some caveats. Uh, some functionalities are not possible uh, on stage yet, but we would like to uh, work on this uh, more. Uh, more information can be seen in this uh, paint issue, which you can find on github.com uh, on our packet namespace in the packet service repository. Uh, so we would be, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, next, next one is our documentation. We improve it in the last months and uh, year a lot. It, I think it's, it's much cleaner, cleaner now and more readable. So I hope you can find uh, the relevant information more easily. And also uh, what you can find here is our blog post. Uh, in, product, in production, we do deployment weekly and each week uh, with this deployment, we make a short blog post describing uh, what's new, what you need to uh, think about, what are some issue fix or some news. So uh, if you want to know more about uh, or some news from the packet, Land. So take a look on this. Uh, since packet is built on top of many external systems or couple the information or trigger some uh, other systems, uh, it's really, really hard to be stable, uh, but uh, we try hard to uh, be stable and uh, we in the last year mostly uh, we spent a lot of time on this in the last weeks and added a lot of retries and retries and retries on many levels so the our service should be more stable now and also we have some babysitting so-called uh, tasks that uh, that tries to take care of some dangling results or if we haven't received any any results so we fix that afterwards so uh, hopefully this will be much better now um, another thing Tomas mentioned is that we participate in some upstream uh, actions uh, or projects as well uh, the Red Hat Open Source Contest, or for example, Google Summer of Code. And last year in summer, uh, we have a two projects in the Google Summer of Code. And one was a GitLab support for packet service. So now you can use uh, packet service on in GitLab instances. Uh, by now we have you, our users that are required to make it work only on gitlab.com, but if you want to try it on some different instance, it's just from our side to create new user in that instance and edit, add an authentication uh, to our configuration. So that's pretty easy. Uh, so uh, there are not so much users uh, by now, but let us know uh, if you found some problems with that. Uh, we would like to uh, work on this more and also the CentOS stream uh, development workflow is done on GitLab so this should uh, receive a lot of care. Yeah, uh, another uh, another project was about dash creating dashboard. So now we have a nice dashboard that lists the last copper builds, Koji builds, and so on, and also the projects. So take a look. And with that, uh, we are currently working to uh, use this uh, dashboard to uh, show the result pages which will be much user friendly than the uh, than the current result pages. 
Yeah. And uh, last news uh, is uh, our GitHub project, this Kanban board, uh, which we introduced to uh, provide some visibility because we start we've started to work on the central stream and but still want to work on this uh, upstream part the this packet service project for github and gitlab so uh, we want to correctly uh, use our time and bandwidth to work on some inter important parts and important issues so we've created this projects where we track what we are working on, what we have planned to do, uh, so you can easily see that. And uh, if anyone has some uh, issue that needs to be uh, raised in priority, so let us know. Uh, so uh, we know that you require something hard uh, and we know that we need to work on this. And that's probably all new stuff and I'm going to uh, move my word to who knows with some more interesting numbers. Thank you, Franta. So um, let's have a look what actually happened the last year. And uh, I spent the last day trying to dig out some numbers from all the metrics and databases we have. Um, to learn more about uh, what happened in Packet World since last year, mid-February. So just looking at GitHub, we had 45 contributors uh, merged over 1,300 merge requests and touched on 970 issues from which, if I remember correctly, 190 something are still open. So there is still a lot of um, lot of work left to be done. Uh, actually, from these numbers, the one I was a little bit surprised is the high number of contributors, which is like four times as the team uh, who is assigned to work on this project. Uh, and yes, like from from these forty five, some are bots, um, and actually bots are the most active ones. Uh, but it's good to see that with all the Google, Google Summer of Code and internships and uh, external contributors, uh, we have so many people contributing to this project. Um, yeah, this is the uh, our monitoring dashboard. A few screenshots from here showing this is the last week for the GitHub events um, we are receiving and then all the copper bills we are triggering. Um, actually, there is this difference between these, these two slides um, in, in, in matter of numbers. Um, not all the GitHub webhooks we receive, we are going to actually uh, run a copper build for. Sometimes people, what we learned, just install the application on their repositories, but then they never bother to configure it. So there is a little bit high noise to signal ratio here between these two. Um, SRPM builds, um, this is what most uh, PRs and branches are going to run uh, before getting to the copper build. Um, SRPM builds are actually done in our, like in packet infrastructure. Um, we did more than 7,000 of them uh, in the last year uh most of them were successful many of them failed um if you ask me i that's the piece of uh, our infra or process that i would like uh to uh improve stability on even further uh i just find this five percent a little bit annoying um then copper builds that's a high number and i hope i did the numbers right because uh, it turns out that we ran like 47,000 ish uh, builds, uh, copper builds in the last uh, last year. Uh, we have a small percentage of pending, which is actually a bug. <laughs> we have on a roadmap to fix. Sometimes we just forget about builds and we never update their status in the database. 
Um, and now, if you participated in the poll, uh, you might already guessed that uh, we processed or contributed to over 1,800 PRs. And this is a breakdown of all the repositories where we did this. Um, this number doesn't include uh, the test repositories we run for ourselves. So, and yes, I guess uh, uh, somebody in the chat I saw was mentioning uh, Anaconda. It did over 600 uh, uh, PR contributions to this. Um, so this was the runs on PRs. We have the other feature where, uh, as uh, Franta mentioned, where we can build on when, when a push happens to a branch. Um, this is not that used yet, but still they are like around seven, 700 uh, of these happened uh, uh, during the last three uh, year. Uh, and uh, this feature with the combination of custom copper projects, uh, it's, it's really nice because if you are maintaining some, some packages in copper, um, you can basically have uh, uh, builds and new versions of them just by uh, working in GitHub. Testing farm tests, because that's the other big feature uh, we are running. I guess this uh, pie chart shows uh, the stability issues we were having with testing farm uh, during the last year. Um, and yeah, we have the same bug here. We sometimes forget about tests being triggered and they just stuck in the running state. Um, activity. That's the feature I would like to see being used more often. Currently, we have uh, in Fedora disk gate 22 packages which received some kind of contribution uh, during the last year um, done by packet service. This means that whenever you do a release, you can set up a job to uh, so that packet actually takes that release and proposes as a PR to the uh, Fedora uh, package. Um, so usage is not that high here. Uh, I think we need to work to get more users on this uh, because it's, it's really convenient. So in general, we try to push ourselves to to be a straightforward way to test and release in Fedora. Um, yesterday we were discussing with Tomas uh, why preparing for this uh, for this talk that a um, few few years back uh, there was a lot of frustration about uh, developing in GitHub, but having no easy way to to test your work in Fedora and to get feedback quickly and. That stays the main goal of the packet project. Um, so that was our session. Uh, you can find us on packet.dev, on packet channel in Freenode. Um, and I guess we are ready for questions. I, I will read it out. So the question is when setting up source git work best when integrated directly upstream or is it preferred to set it up on a fork? Hmm. Tomas, do you want to answer this? Uh, I can try. So I would say it works best when set up in upstream. And we already mentioned Anaconda and I would like to use them as an example here because they set up packet for their main branch and right now for 34 branch so that when they are working in upstream in like new features in Anaconda or changes, like they directly get feedback whether their change works in stream, in raw height or in different releases. And that's like, that's the closest you can get when you are developing new code. Like when you are creating new code, you want to know as soon as possible if it's gonna break someone in future or like in, in the downstream. Uh, like if this is not possible that the upstream developers are not interested in Fedora Linux or 
like in the downstream, then setting it up on a fork is the second best way. And the third way would be like to create the source kit repository, like to maintain your downstream package like this. But setting it up in upstream is definitely the best way. And we can definitely help you set it up if you want.